Hi, this is Evan, and I'm your host for Wine Couch TV. Without question, one of the most popular segments that we do with some frequency on this show is Table Hopping with Marcia. Marcia is Marcia Gagliardi, who is the uh, AbFab pr pr proprietress of uh, TableHopper.com, which is the absolute must-have e-column about all things culinary, bar, and club in the San Francisco Bay Area. She graces our screen with some regularity, and we chat restaurants and food and wine and all other good stuff uh, in between. So without uh, further ado, let's bring her on. Welcome, Marcia, and thank you for coming back to the show. Team Blue today, I like yeah, that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, last time you were here, we chatted about a wonderful restaurant called Ubuntu, which is up in Napa and is without question a really cool restaurant doing some wonderful cuisine. Staying with our theme of kind of getting out of San Francisco mm -hmm. a little bit, we talked a bit and decided to go out to the East Bay. All right. And we're going to focus on a restaurant called Camino. What can you tell us about Camino? Camino is awesome. And it's funny because I think actually it was another place that, like Ubuntu that was previously a furniture store. <laughs> um, it's a new theme. But um, anyway, it's opened by uh, Russell Moore and his partner, Allison Hoppling. And Russell was at Chez Panisse for 20, 21 years. My old stomping grounds. Okay, thought you'd appreciate it. So um, he was, uh, he had a, a vision and a dream of having his own place and it's spectacular. You walk in and there are these long communal tables. Um, it has a very spacious feeling, but in the far back is mm -hmm. this huge limestone fireplace. Mm -hmm. And that's what he cooks out of. It's like, you feel like, I don't know, you're in medieval France or something and, you know, you'll see these bean pots going and roasting meats and, you know, not to say that they don't cook, there's, you know, kitchen in the back and they also have um, a wood-fired oven, but the fireplace is... The hearth, the central place. Exactly. And he has this big chopping block where, you know, he's expediting. It's amazing. And what's really nice about this restaurant is, is everything is, you know, manageable. I'm so... Uh, burned out can candidly on going to restaurants where they have like seven gazillion wines and a 25-page yeah. menu. And what they're all about at Camino is very much in the spirit of Chez Panisse, sort of freshness, market market basket cooking. Yeah. And the menu literally changes every day. Daily. And it's really edited too, which I mean, for some people, they like having a lot of choice, but I love just seeing, he has a whole animal philosophy as well. So you'll see, you know, different pieces used, you know, whether it's a sausage or a roast and you know, it's it's definitely, I think I find it like you, it's relaxing to just go somewhere and be like, oh, okay, these are my choices. And a lot of nice, really wonderful, earthy, comforting food. Yeah. From the wine perspective, they take a very similar philosophy. And what was, was nice about looking at the wine list the very first time is, first of all, it's quite affordable. Corkage, by the way, if you chose to bring in your own wine and you don't really need to, is only $15. But it's about two dozen wines. Yep. I mean, it's not more than that. They've got a smackling of sparkling wines, some nice whites, choice reds, and they sort of venture around. It's very like his food, very idiosyncratic very chosen. There's clearly a tip of the beret, mm. if you will, to France and a little bit to Italy and to Spain and a smattering of uh, California and some Oregon wines, but each of them is very personality filled and is going to work well with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I pulled a wine today that they offer by the glass. It's a Sauvignon. It's actually called Sauvignon Number no. 2 what? and it's produced, let's grab our glass, by a producer uh, named Claude Rocheblanc. And um, there's a couple of guys there that sound like they could have owned the old furniture store, but I won't go <laughs> into their names. Claude Rocheblanc is what you should look at. It's the 2007 vintage. And uh, right off the bat, when I smelled it, I don't know if you've had it before. Mm -mm. It's a very idiosyncratic wine. I mean, it's first of all, it's very affordable. It's seven and a half dollars by the glass, and only twenty nine dollars on the wine list, which makes it, by our you know tokens, about every day in price. But it's not what you would expect in Sauvignon yeah. Blanc. You usually expect you know alfalfa and olives and citrus and all these other things. And this, if anything, has almost sort of a mustard and radish character, I like that. a sweetness of fruit, very Chapinese kind of notes. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and sort of not your sort of standard everyday uh, type thing. Let's go ahead and taste. Mm. Mm. This particular wine is from the from the Touraine in the Loire Valley. So again, most people when they think Loire Valley, Sancerre, Puy Fumé, not necessarily Touraine. And when you do taste Touraine Sauvignons, they tend to be lighter. This is not a light wine. No. It's fairly full-bodied. It's actually quite creamy and rich and still has excellent acidity. And I was trying to pull their menu. And it's tough, you know, usually we say you should have this wine, you know, this dish is going to be a killer combo, but when the menu changes every yeah, day, yeah. kind of tough. But I was just looking through a couple of uh, older menus, and I was thinking on this one, um, they had this eggplant gratin with roasted polenta, escarole, and corn, which would rock with mm -hmm. that particular mm -hmm. wine. And I thought also this grilled white seed bass with the green beans, new potatoes, and cherry tomato salad would be good. And something about that dish, and this, I had a huge epiphany when I was having that dish, uh -huh. because I took a bite of the potatoes with that dish, and suddenly it all made sense to 
to me about this place because those potatoes are potatoes I could never get on my own. Mm -hmm. These are you know things that, he, that the chef Russell was able to source due to his long-standing relationships with people. And I was eating that potato, and I'm like. That's why I'm here, yeah. this potato. Are those the same yeah. potatoes as the ones cooked in oh, duck fat? Oh, yeah, those are very charming. <laughs> it should actually hold up really well with this yeah. wine, too, I might add. And then just looking at the second menu, uh, this boot, I was thinking this boudin mm -hmm. blanc with the red and green sauerkraut, that, that sharp note yep. of the kraut and the pickling would actually hang with that wine quite that well. Would be, yeah, and I think that's a new uh, thing that they're doing, the little boudin blanc, I think on Mondays or something. So anyway, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, before we get out of here, let's do a wine couch word of the week and let's leave the world of, of wine and go into the world of food and go back onto the one you were talking about, boudin. What is boudin? <laughs> I think probably people go into restaurants, mostly French, look at this word and probably have no clue what they're going to get. And if they do, maybe they're thinking they're getting pudding or something, yeah. but what is a boudin? Well, if you're in New Orleans, it'll be boudin. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it's a variation of a sausage, and in this case, typically boudin blanc is with veal mm -hmm. and milk and bread, I mm -hmm. think. And then it's really um, almost pureed to a point of just extreme smoothness, delicious with sauerkraut. Um, but then you can have variations of boudin with um, with with blood, right. no? Yeah. Boudin noir is, a yeah. blood, is yeah. essentially a blood yeah. sausage, yeah. like morcia without the uh, morcia yeah, morcia. No, I know, I, like I know. I know. Um, <laughs> but there, what's nice about this is when you do see boudin, one, look for sausage, but two, they're also very wine friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the texture that you're talking about that holds up nicely. They're they're flavorful, but they're not like overwhelming and 49 kinds of pepper and heat and yeah. all that other good stuff. Yeah. So uh, something to think about. A little about. decadent. A bit decadent yeah, and a little bit different on our wine couch word of the all week, right. which is food. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this episode. And I I hope you'll come back and join us again Anytime. yet again soon. Yep. And um, until then, go out to the East Bay, grab a little boudin, a little bit of uh, Clos Roche Sauvignon Blanc, <laughs> and you take care.